Does anyone remember metals? Uh, the whole topic. Today we're going to study the whole topic. Uh, the first thing is the basics. Basics that you studied about metals. Uh, that they would form. They're on the left side of the pure table. So if you have a pure table, uh, metals are going to be found on the on the left side of the pure table. Okay, this side. So they'll be found on the left side. The other side is your non-metals, and the main property of uh, of metals is that they like to lose electrons. That's the main number one property, which is why they, you call them metals is that they uh, like to lose electrons, and they like to form they like to form positive positive ions. I so said that's that's the main property of metals. I'll uh, quickly do the uh, chemical bonding of metals. That uh, uh, they form metallic bonds. So what is metallic bonds? Metallic bonds is you'll have lots of metal atoms. Okay, so that's uh, one of them. And uh, just hold on a second. I so said there'll be lots of metal atoms okay so so there are going to be lots of uh, metal atoms and those metal atoms okay so let's say we're having why just another one. So let's say uh, this is a metallic lattice. It's going to be a regular arrangement, and all these metal atoms are going to be losing electrons. They're going to be forming positive ions. So all of them would end up would end up losing electrons. And all those electrons are going to be delocalized. The, these electrons would be roaming around in the middle somewhere so it's a it's a it's called a giant metallic lattice and it's a regular arrangement of positive metal lines in a sea of free moving electrons. And there's going to be mutual attraction. There's going to be an electrostatic attraction between. So there's going to be an attraction between positive metal lines. And free moving electrons. So these are some things that we already did in uh, uh, that we already didn't cover in uh, in chemical bonding as well. Uh, but just a quick recap, uh, Take, we can do all the other things. Uh, so giant metallic lattice, that's it. Uh, what are the properties of metals that they've got? Uh, the number uh, a few properties are that they have 
high, uh, relatively high melting points, number one. They've got high melting points, uh, ex a few exceptions. Uh, group one metals, remember, have melting points lower than 100. Lower or lesser than 100. And there's another one, which is mercury, which is. So that's a liquid. Otherwise, relatively speaking, they do have high melting points. The other thing, the other point about this is, number two is that they all conduct electricity. And then you have point number three, which is that uh, point number three is that they are malleable. and ductile. So what happens is ions can slip and slide when a force is applied. And slide. When a force is applied. I said, can somebody post the board link again? A second. Like, let me try and uh, do this quickly. I'm sorry, I get bored. I said, so a few properties of metals and the ions can slip and slide. So when you, when you hammer it, uh, you apply a force. The atoms are uh, what kind of slip and slide they'll uh, they'll move or give way when you apply uh, when you apply a force. Okay, so so the atoms, but remember the metallic bonding is kind of relatively strong, so it's not going to be an easy process. I mean, the ions will kind of slip and slide, and uh, when a force is applied, but only with some difficulty. Like you can't. You can't do this uh, very, very easily. Most metals are a kind of hard, not very soft. Uh, I think I sent it privately, just a second. I said, okay, uh, we'll, we'll briefly just cover alloys. So alloys, can they, you have, uh... I said, what's the difference? Okay, alloys are a mixture of metals. So it's a mixture of metals, different metals. Uh, you should know a few alloys. Uh, Mike, is he on? Hamza, your mic is on. That's a mixture of metals. Usme, you, you need to have, uh, you need to know what bronze is. Bronze is a mixture of copper and uh, I think uh, copper and tin. You need to know what brass is. So brass is a mixture of copper and one more zinc. And you need to know what steel is. It's a mixture of iron plus steel. No, not iron plus steel, iron plus carbon. Now there's only one major difference between uh, between uh, an alloy and a and a metal is that alloys are relatively they're rel relatively stronger compared to metals. So the bigger question is why is why is that? Uh, so what happens is uh, that if you have an alloy, if you have a pure metal, and Let's copy that. And if you have a pure metal and you decide to add another atom to it, another mixture, you, you'll add another mixture. So this other thing might have atoms that 
are different from it. For example, let me change the color of this. Uh, let's make it a pink. So it might be, I mean, the fact could be that these other ones, they might be bigger in size. So if they're bigger in size, what that would do is that that would create an, a haphazard structure. An irregularly arranged lattice is going to be created because of the addition of this uh, iron, which has a different, which has the, which has a different size. So all these uh, So anyways, this creates a completely haphazard structure. Second. So it creates a completely haphazard structure. So I'm going to put, I'm going to add another one over here and push all of them away. So instead of being nice and a nice and regular structure, we now have a completely irregular structure. So this is now a more irregular structure. So that's the reason why uh, when you apply a force, now they're not, you don't have nice layers that can easily slip and slide. So they're all kind of mixed up, jumbled up, uh, and irregular lattices formed. So, so the reason they're relatively stronger is that due to different sized metal lines, So an irregular metallic so an irregular metallic lattice is formed and the ions can no longer slip and slide easily. I said, those are the things that you have to, that you got to remember about alloys. Uh, now we're going to move towards uh, different types of metals and we're going to talk about the periodic table. So if I have a periodic table with me, uh, let me just open one. So if there's a, if there's a periodic table and I said, now this one. So if you have a look at this periodic table, the ones on the on the left side are all. I mean, if I just copy the entire periodic table and put it there. So the ones on the left side are we're going to start with the first one. We're going to start with group one metals. So group one metals have certain properties. So we're going to discuss those. Uh, group one metals are, the, are these ones, uh, the ones that you see over here. That's group one. So we're going to talk about group one metals first. So about group one metals, uh, they're extremely reactive. and reactivity increases down the group. So it increases down the group. So 
So for bigger atoms, it's it's a lot easier to lose electrons. So bigger atoms, they lose electrons easily because they, the electron is much further away. So they're extremely reactive. And they're extremely reactive, especially with cold water. So, so they react explosively with cold water. That's one of the properties. Is this clear? Yes or no? Is this clear? Amna, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So extremely reactive with cold waters. Other things about group one metals. Uh, they're also known as uh, that. That's one thing. Extremely reactive. Uh, point number two is that they are uh, called alkali metals. Why? Because they form strongly alkaline solutions. Because group one metals, remember, are also, their compounds are very soluble as well. So if you add sodium to water, there's going to be an explosive reaction. Of, uh, and what's going to happen is that NOH is going to be produced and hydrogen gas would be given off. So that's a strong alkali that's getting produced in the reaction. So these are referred to as alkali metals. Another property about them is that they've got, they've got very low density. So you've got alkali metals, uh, they are extremely reactive and they become even more reactive. Plus they've got low density, low density meaning that uh, it's even lower compared to water. So it's low compared to water, which is why they don't sink. And they always float on water. So that is one property of alkali metals. Another, another property is that they've got relatively low melting points as well. Most group one metals, they melt at uh, below 100 degrees centigrade. So they melt below 100 degrees centigrade as well. So those are properties of alkali metals. Uh, extremely reactive, uh, low density can be cut, and they're also soft. There's another one which is they are very soft. Which means they can be cut with a they can be cut with a knife. So they're extremely soft as well. So here are some of the properties you have to remember that group that these belong, uh, properties they belong to group one metals, and we're going to talk about group two metals just very briefly. Uh, clear group one metals. G sir. Now group two metals. Group two metals are referred to as alkaline earth metals. The uh, reason um, uh, they're, they're known as earth metals is because they're very abundant in the earth's crust. You've got a number of them like, uh, like calcium carbonate, which is limestone. Do you remember we used it for acid rain, uh, calcium hydroxide, oxide or calcium hydroxide. So this is known as limestone.
And this one over here is known as lime. So very abundant in the Earth's crust. That's pretty much it. Most uh, compounds of magnesium, I mean, group two is this one. So uh, magnesium and calcium are kind of really, really abundant in the Earth's crust. Magnesium ions are pretty much everywhere. So that's group two metals. A uh, good thing about group one and group two, both metals is that they do not form colored compounds. Their compounds are always white in color. So another property is apart from transition metals, most metals. So apart from transition metals, So apart from transition, metals, what happens is most metals, are white in color. And most metals, metal compounds are, I mean, they're compounds, not the metal itself, compounds are white in color and they form colorless solutions. So they form colorless solutions. And uh, As they form colorless solutions, that's another property. And then we're going to move towards transition metals. We're going to talk a bit about transition metals, uh, what's going on with transition metals. Now, transition metals are the ones that are in the box. Uh, I mean, these are the ones over here. TK right in the middle. Now, transition metals are those metals that uh, have five properties. Remember those five properties. Number one, uh, number one is they've got very high melting and boiling points. Number two, they've got very high densities as well. They're pretty heavy as well. I mean, these are your everyday metals. So these are your most, most of the everyday that you see around you. Uh, they're kind of unreactive as well. Which is why you make things out of these metals. For example, uh, you've got iron, you've got silver, you've got gold, you've got copper, which is uh, in your wires. Uh, gold is AU, you have tin cans, etc. So most uh, most metals and most of the everyday metals are your and most of the everyday metals are your uh, are your transition metals. So they've got high density number three, the third point is uh, they've got variable charges as well, which is known as oxidation states. As a pair, you've got a property number four, which is that they're very good uh, catalysts. And the last one is property number five is okay, there is a fifth property, uh, which is what's left colored compounds. So they form colored compounds. And colored solutions. And you have to remember the properties of transition metals at all costs. Group one. Group one is the opposite. They they've got uh, they've got they're extremely they're extremely reactive. That's one. I said so group one is they're extremely reactive. Uh, they're known as alkali metals because uh, they dissolve in water to form alkalis. They've got low density and low melting points, and they're soft as well. Transition metals are kind of the opposite. They've got high melting points, high densities, uh, variable charges as well. 
they're often very good catalysts as well. And they're colored and they form colored compounds as well. So some of the colors are given in the data sheet that I've given you. For example, you've got copper sulfate. So that's one, like if I search for Cu, SO4 crystals. So these crystals are blue in color. So most of the most of the transition metals, the kind of uh, have colored compounds. So remember the properties of transition metals. Is this clear? Was that clear? Hamza, is this clear? Amna? Yes, sir. Now you're going to study the reactive disease, which is that some of the metals are unreactive. Some of the metals are very reactive. So I'm just going to quickly write down the reactrices, which is that the first metals are the group one metals. They're extremely reactive. So you can include some of them, K, N, A. Then you have your group two metals. So these are your group two metals. Uh, K, N, A, C, M, G, A, L. Then you have your three metals. And then you have your transition metals or the or the elements that belong to that block. Uh, so it's going to be Zn, Fe, Sn, Pb, which is lead, H, and then you've got Cu, and H, Ag, Hg is mercury, Au is coal, and Pt, which is which is platinum. As I said, anyways, it's a it's a gradual trend. Uh, you move towards transition metals, and they become unreactive. So here's your, here's your very general trend. Uh, that's group one, that's group two, group three, and then you've got your, then you've got your transition metals. And what is going on uh, in this trend is that across the period, they become less reactive. So on the left side, the elements are very reactive. On the extreme right side, uh, they are very unreactive. Is this also clear? Yes, sir. Just, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the reactions with water. You have to memorize this reactive disease. And remember, uh, who's more reactive? Cons are the reactive both. Okay, down the group reactivity increases. So if you're talking about group one, I've, I haven't written all the elements, but the one that's lower down in the group, that's more reactive compared to the one that's up the group. Calcium or magnesium, maybe uh, I mean, the order is K5, I write down all the elements, it's going to be Mg and Ca, and then you've got S Sr and Ba. So, who's going to be the most reactive out of them? That's going to be Ba, followed by Sr, then Ca, then Mg. Is this clear? So, reactivity sees me, you don't write all the elements, you just write uh, some of them, which you should know. So, all clear so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Achha, ab ye uske baad, uh, water ke reaction kar lete hai, hai? So reactions with water, metals reacting with with water, reactions with H2O. Uh, what happens with reactions with water? And we, we're going to write down the whole reactor disease again. It's going to be uh, it's going to be KNA. Mg, then you've got Al, uh, KCMG, Al, Zn, Fe. And you've got Pb, and then you've got H, Cu, Hg, Ag, Au, and Pd. So the top ones are the most reactive. So we're going to start with the top one. We're going to talk about potassium and NA. We did actually talk about them. And potassium and NA, and also we can include, cal not calcium at the moment, but just potassium and NA, group one, group one metals. 
So, so the first thing is group one metals are very reactive. They react explosively. So what's going to happen here, like if you add Na to water, it would vigorously react. There's going to be explosions and it would form NaOH and hydrogen gas would be, would be given off. Now, the observations, observations are, they're going to ask you about the observation. Sodium metal would float because it has low density would float and fizz on the top surface. And it would melt. or catch fire. Uh, bubbles of H2 gas would be seen. I mean, there is H2 gas being produced. So you're going to see bubbles of H2 gas. Okay, that's probably it. Okay, so, you, so remember the observation, what happens when a group one metal, it reacts, ends up reacting with water. Is that clear? So we just did group one metal. So slowly we're going to move downwards. TK, CA ka reaction, karega, MG, AL, iron, rusting of iron. We're going to talk about that. But remember, group one metals are kind of, they're going to react very, very, they're going to react explosively. TK. So, so TK, let's continue tomorrow with the reactor receives. Quick question, then you can see. Ka. All clear? G, sir. Okay, let's continue tomorrow. Love is. Love is, sir.